Chapter 11 of Among the Pond People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Among the Pond People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. The Clever Water Adder. None of the pond people were alone more than the water adders. The snapping turtle was left to himself a great deal until the day when he and Bellistoma drove away the boys. After that, his neighbors began to understand him better and he was less grumpy, so that those who wore shells were soon quite fond of him. Bellistoma did not have many friends among the smaller people, and only a few among the larger ones. They said that he was cruel, and that he had a bad habit of using his stout sucking tube to sting with. Still, Bellistoma did not care. He said, a giant water bug does not always live in the water. I shall have my wings soon, and leave the water and marry. After that, I shall fly away on my wedding trip. Mrs. Bellisoma may go with me, if she feels like doing so after laying her eggs here. I shall go anyway, and I shall flutter and sprawl around the light, and sting people who bother me, and have a happy time. That was Bellisoma's way. He would sting people who bothered him. But then he always said that they need not have bothered him, and perhaps that was so. With the water adders it was different. They were good-natured enough, yet the mud turtles and snapping turtle were the only ones who ever called upon them and found them at home. The small people without shells were afraid of them, and the clams and pond snails never called upon anyone. The minnows said they could not bear the looks of the adders. They had such ugly mouths and such quick motions. The larger fishes kept away on account of their children, who were small and tender. One might think that the sandhill cranes, the fish hawks, and the other shore families would have been good friends for them, but when they called, the adders were always away. People said that the adders were afraid of them. The yellow brown frog wished that the adders could be scared, badly scared, some time, so scared that a chilly feeling would run down their backs from their heads clear to the tips of their tails. I wish, said he, that the chilly feeling would be big enough to go way through to their bellies. Their bellies are only the front side of their backs anyway, he added, because they are so thin. Of course this was a dreadful wish to make, but people said that one of the adders had frightened the yellow-brown frog so that he never got over it, and this was the reason he felt so. The water adders were certainly the cleverest people in the pond, and there was one mother adder who was so very bright they called her the clever water adder. She could do almost anything, and she knew it. She talked about it, too, and that showed bad taste, and was one reason why she was not liked better. She could swim very fast, could creep, glide, catch hold of things with her tail, hang herself from the branch of a tree, lift her head far into the air, leap, dart, bound, and dive. All her family could do these things, but she could do them a little the best. One day she was hanging over the pond in a very graceful position, with her tail twisted carelessly around a willow branch. The snapping turtle and a mud turtle father were in the shallow water below her. Her slender forked tongue was darting in and out of her open mouth. She was using her tongue in this way most of the time. It is useful in feeling of things, she said, and then I have always thought it quite becoming. She could see herself reflected in the still water below her, and she noticed how prettily the dark brown of her back shaded into the white of her belly. You see, she was vain as well as clever. The snapping turtle felt cross today, and had come to see if a talk with her would not make him feel better. The mud turtle was tired of having the children sprawl around him, and of Mrs. Mud Turtle telling about the trouble she had to get the right kind of food. The clever water adder spoke first of the weather. It must be dreadfully hot for the shore people, she said. Think of their having to wear the same feathers all year, and fly around in the sunshine to find food for their children. Ah, yes, said the mud turtle. How they must wish for shells. Humph, said the snapping turtle. What for? To fly with? Let them come in swimming with their children, if they are warm and tired. The water adder laughed in her snaky way, and showed her sharp teeth. I have heard, she said, that when the wild ducks bring their children here to swim, they do not always take so many home as they brought. The snapping turtle became very much interested in his warty right foreleg, and did not seem to hear what she said. The mud turtle smiled. I have heard, 
she went on, that when young ducks dive head first, they are quite sure to come up again, but that when they dive feet first, they never come up. What do you mean? asked the snapping turtle, and he was snappy about it. Oh, nothing, replied the water adder, swinging her head back and forth and looking at the scales on her body. I know what you mean, said the snapping turtle, and you know what you mean, but I have to eat something, and if I am swimming under the water and a duckling paddles along just above me and sticks his foot into my mouth, I am likely to swallow him before I think. The water adder saw that he was provoked by what she had said, so she talked about something else. I think the ducks spoil their children, said she. They make such a fuss over them, and they are not nearly so bright as my children. Why, mine hatch as soon as the eggs are laid, and go hunting at once. They are no trouble at all. I never worry about mine, said the mud turtle. Although their mother thinks it is not safe for them all to sleep at once as they do on a log in the sunshine. It isn't, said the adder decidedly. I never close my eyes. None of us adders do. Nobody can ever say that we close our eyes to danger. They couldn't shut their eyes if they wanted to, because they had no eyelids, but she did not speak of that. How stupid people are, she said. Most of them, remarked the turtles. All of them, she said, except us adders and the turtles. I even think that some of the turtles are a little queer, don't you? We have thought so, said the mud turtle. They certainly are, agreed the snapping turtle, who was beginning to feel much better natured. What did you say? asked the adder, who, like all her family, was a little deaf. Ouch! exclaimed the snapping turtle. Ouch! Ouch! What is the matter? asked the mud turtle. Then he began to slap the water with his short, stout tail and say, Ouch! Two naughty young water boatmen had swung quietly up on their backs and stung the turtles on their tails. Then they swam away, pushing themselves quickly through the water with swift strokes of their hairy oar legs. Ah! exclaimed the snapping turtle, and he backed into the mud, knowing that fine, soft mud is the best thing in the world for stings. Ah! exclaimed the mud turtle. If I could only reach my tail with my head, or even with one of my hind feet. Reach your tail with your head, asked the water adder in her sweetest voice. Nothing is easier. And she wound herself around the willow branch in another graceful position, and took the tip of her tail daintily between her teeth. Humph, said the snapping turtle, and he pulled his tail out of the mud and swam away. Ugh, said the mud turtle, and he swam away with the snapping turtle. What a rude person she is, they said, always trying to show how much more clever she is than other people. We would rather be stupid and polite. After a while, the snapping turtle said, But then, you know, we are not stupid. Of course not, replied the mud turtle. Not even queer. End of chapter 11